Welcome to the 2023 CDL Passenger Practice Test. This test has 60 questions with explained answers to help you prepare for this test. Before we get started, don't forget to jumpstart that like button to keep this channel running. Now here is your CDL instructor to walk you through the questions. Question one, which of the following presents a major issue for drivers of vehicles with limited ground clearance? A, sudden turns on highways. B, long stretches of open road. C, humps or dips in the road. D, smooth and even surfaces. The correct answer is C, humps or dips in the road. Drivers of vehicles with low ground clearance are particularly challenged by humps or dips in the road. Negotiating such road irregularities can result in scraping or damage to the vehicle's undercarriage, necessitating extra care and skillful navigation. Question 2. What is the definition of the standee line on a passenger bus? A. The designated area for the driver's break time. B. The line where passengers must queue for boarding. C. A two-inch line on the floor to the rear of the driver's seat that all passengers must stay behind while the bus is in motion. D. A special line for elderly and disabled passengers. The correct answer is C. A two-inch line on the floor to the rear of the driver's seat that all passengers must stay behind while the bus is in motion. The standee line is a safety measure on passenger buses, marked on the floor, that indicates the area where passengers must remain behind while the bus is moving. This helps ensure the safety of both passengers and the driver, preventing interference with the driver's operation of the vehicle. Question 3. What is the appropriate action to take if a passenger intends to bring a car battery or a can of gasoline onto your bus? A. Allow them to carry the items if properly secured. B. Inform them that these items are allowed only in the luggage compartment. C. Advise them to keep the items in their lap during the journey. D. Not allow him to do so. The correct answer is D. Not allow him to do so. Car batteries and gasoline cans are considered hazardous materials due to their potential to cause fire or explosion risks. Therefore, it is crucial to prohibit passengers from bringing such items onto the bus to ensure the safety of all passengers and the vehicle. Question 4. What leads to the off-tracking of the rear wheels? A. Smaller distance between the front and rear wheels, gentle turns and curves, slower driving speeds. B. Greater distance between the front and rear wheels, sharper turns and curves, faster driving speeds. C. Equal distance between the front and rear wheels, gradual turns and curves, moderate driving speeds. D. Reduced distance between the front and rear wheels, wide turns and curves, cautious driving speeds. The correct answer is B. Greater distance between the front and rear wheels, sharper turns and curves, faster driving speeds. Off-tracking of the rear wheels occurs due to the larger gap between the front and rear wheels in comparison to the vehicle's turning radius, resulting in the rear wheels following a slightly different path during turns. This phenomenon is more pronounced when the vehicle is taking sharper turns at higher speeds. Question 5. On a bus... Where is it permissible to have recapped or regrooved tires? A. Anywhere except on the front wheels. B. On the front and rear wheels. C. Anywhere except on the rear wheels. D. Only on the front wheels. The correct answer is A. Anywhere except on the front wheels. Buses can have recapped or regrooved tires on any of the wheels except the front wheels. The front tires are critical for steering and stability, so they are required to have new tires for optimal safety. Question 6. Having fulfilled all the prerequisites for a Class B bus driver's license, which one of these vehicles are you ineligible to operate? A. School bus with passengers. B. City transit bus. C. Shuttle bus for hotel guests. D. Class A bus. The correct answer is D. Class A bus. Despite obtaining a Class B bus driver's license, 
you are not authorized to drive a Class A bus. Different classes of bus licenses may have varying restrictions based on vehicle size and type. Question 7. Which set of items includes the three essential types of emergency equipment required on your bus? A. First aid kit, flashlight, and tire pressure gauge. B. Fire extinguisher, spare electrical fuses, and emergency reflectors. C. Tool set, reflective vest, and warning triangles. D. Jumper cables, safety cones, and hazard flares. The correct answer is B. Fire extinguisher, spare electrical fuses, and emergency reflectors. To ensure preparedness for emergencies, your bus should be equipped with a fire extinguisher, spare electrical fuses, and emergency reflectors. These items help address various safety concerns and potential issues while on the road. Question 8. What is the recommended procedure for buses when approaching most railroad crossings? A. Increase speed to quickly cross the tracks. B. Come to a complete stop before crossing. C. Change lanes while crossing the tracks. D. Honk the horn repeatedly while crossing the tracks. The correct answer is B. Come to a complete stop before crossing. Buses are generally advised to come to a complete stop before crossing railroad tracks to ensure safety and proper visibility. This practice allows the driver to assess the situation, listen for approaching trains, and proceed only when it's safe to do so. Question 9. Where is it prohibited to allow passengers to stand on the bus? A. In front of the standee line. B. In the rear rows. C. In the front rows. D. Behind the driver's seat. The correct answer is A. In front of the standee line. Passengers are not allowed to stand in front of the standee line on the bus as this area is reserved for the safety of both passengers and the driver. Standing in this area could impede the driver's view and pose a safety hazard. Question 10. What is the appropriate action regarding gear changes when driving a bus with a manual transmission across railroad tracks? A. Shift to a higher gear for smoother crossing. B. Shift to a lower gear for better traction. C. Should never change gear on a bus with a manual transmission. D. Shift gears quickly to maintain momentum. The correct answer is C. Should never change gear on a bus with a manual transmission. When crossing railroad tracks with a bus equipped with a manual transmission, it's advised to maintain the current gear rather than changing gears. This ensures stability and control over the vehicle during the crossing. Question 11. Which of the following methods of signaling is not advised? A. Using your turn signals when changing lanes. B. Raising your hand to signal a stop. C. Activating your hazard lights while driving in heavy rain. D. Signaling to others that it is safe to pass. The correct answer is D. Signaling to others that it is safe to pass. Signaling to other drivers that it's safe for them to pass you is not recommended. It's their responsibility to assess the traffic situation and decide when it's safe to pass based on their own observations. Question 12. Which of these statements is accurate regarding gear ranges in buses equipped with automatic transmissions? A. Higher gear ranges are more suitable for descending steep hills. B. The lowest ranges should be used for greater engine braking on downgrades. C. Lower gear ranges are best for conserving fuel on flat roads. D. Gear ranges have no impact on driving performance. The correct answer is B. The lowest ranges should be used for greater engine braking on downgrades. When driving buses with automatic transmissions downhill, using the lowest gear ranges can help in utilizing engine braking for better control and reduce strain on the braking system. Question 13. When is the most advisable time to wear your seatbelt for safety? A. At all times for safety. B. During short trips within the city. C. On long trips exceeding an hour. 
D. Only when driving at high speeds. The correct answer is A. At all times for safety. Wearing your seatbelt at all times is essential for your safety, regardless of the driving conditions. Seatbelts significantly reduce the risk of injury in case of sudden stops, collisions, or accidents. Question 14. Under what condition can a bus transport baggage or freight? A. If the items are placed on the seats. B. If the items are secured and out of the way of any exits. C. If the items are scattered throughout the aisle. D. If the items are piled near the driver's seat. The correct answer is B. If the items are secured and out of the way of any exits. Buses can carry baggage or freight, but it is important that the items are properly secured and not obstructing any exits, ensuring passenger safety and efficient emergency evacuation if needed. Question 15. Under what circumstances is a driver prohibited from operating a vehicle according to federal regulations? A. After consuming caffeine. B. Ill or impaired and the condition interferes with his ability to drive. C. Ill or impaired, and the condition enhances driving ability. D. After a short night's sleep. The correct answer is B. Ill or impaired, and the condition interferes with his ability to drive. Federal regulations mandate that drivers should not operate a vehicle if they are unwell or impaired and if their condition hampers their ability to drive safely. This regulation aims to ensure road safety and prevent accidents caused by compromised driving skills. Question 16. Which of these must be shut while the bus is moving? A. Emergency windows. B. Reading lights. C. Passenger conversations. D. Overhead compartments. The correct answer is A. Emergency windows. While the bus is in motion, the emergency windows should be closed. This ensures passenger safety and prevents any potential hazards that might arise from open windows during transit. Question 17. What is the most effective way for a bus driver to prevent slowing down other traffic on the highway? A. By staying in the right lane. B. By frequently changing lanes. C. By staying in the left lane. D. By driving in the center lane. The correct answer is A. By staying in the right lane. To avoid impeding other traffic, a bus driver should primarily stay in the right lane on the highway. This allows faster moving vehicles to pass smoothly and maintain a steady flow of traffic. Question 18. Which of the cargo options listed below is strictly prohibited from being transported on a bus? A. Fresh produce and perishable goods. B. Books and educational materials. C. Tear gas or irritating materials. D. Electronic devices and appliances. The correct answer is C. Tear gas or irritating materials. Buses are not allowed to carry tear gas or other irritating materials as cargo due to safety concerns and the potential risks they pose to passengers and the driver. Question 19. Which braking technique is recommended for maintaining a safe speed when driving downhill? A. Rapid and frequent brake application. B. Use the snub braking method, 5 mph below safe speed. C. Fully engaging the brakes to slow down quickly. D. Pumping the brakes to keep them cool. The correct answer is B. Use the snub braking method, 5 mph below safe speed. The snub braking method, where the brakes are intermittently applied to reduce speed gradually and maintain control, is advised for driving on downgrades. This technique prevents excessive heat buildup in the brakes and offers better control over the vehicle's speed. Question 20. During your bus inspection, what should you verify to ensure proper functionality? A. Radio communication is established. B. All windows are tightly shut. C. Seat covers are clean and intact. D. Rider signaling devices are working properly. 
the correct answer is D. Rider signaling devices are working properly. When inspecting your bus, it's crucial to confirm that rider signaling devices, such as the bells or buttons, are in good working condition. This helps ensure effective communication between passengers and the driver during the journey. Question 21. What should you do at the conclusion of every shift? A. Leave personal belongings on the bus for convenience. B. Take all of your personal belongings, inspect the bus, and report any defects. C. Only inspect the bus if you suspect a defect. D. Inspect the bus, but leave your personal belongings behind. The correct answer is B. Take all of your personal belongings, inspect the bus, and report any defects. To ensure a smooth transition between shifts and the readiness of the bus for the next driver, it's important to remove your personal items, perform a thorough bus inspection, and promptly report any issues or defects for maintenance attention. Question 22. Which of the following actions is prohibited while operating a bus? A. Talking with riders while driving or towing a disabled vehicle. B. Checking the vehicle's rearview mirrors frequently. C. Engaging in conversations with fellow drivers. D. Using the bus's intercom system to make announcements. The correct answer is A. Talking with riders while driving or towing a disabled vehicle. It's not allowed to engage in conversations with passengers while driving or when towing a disabled vehicle, as it can divert the driver's attention from the road and potentially compromise safety. Question 23. In certain cases, you might transport small arms ammunition, emergency drug shipments, or hospital supplies on a bus. The combined weight of these hazardous materials must not exceed blank pounds. A. 500 pounds. B. 250 pounds. C. 100 pounds. D. 750 pounds. The correct answer is A. 500 pounds. When transporting small arms ammunition, emergency drugs, or hospital supplies, the total weight of these hazardous materials should not surpass 500 pounds to ensure safety during transit. Question 24. An approaching vehicle maintains its high beams. How should you address this potential hazard? A. Flash your high beams in return. B. Honk your horn to signal the driver. C. Slow down and switch to low beams. D. Looking to the right side of your lane. The correct answer is D. Looking to the right side of your lane. When faced with an oncoming vehicle using high beams, avoid direct eye contact with the lights and instead focus on the right side of your lane to prevent glare and maintain better visibility. Question 25. When is it necessary to possess a CDL, commercial driver's license? A. You are operating a personal vehicle for daily commuting. B. You are going to drive a delivery truck under 10,000 pounds. C. You are going to drive a vehicle that carries over 15 people, including the driver. D. You are driving a rented moving truck for household relocation. The correct answer is C. You are going to drive a vehicle that carries over 15 people, including the driver. A CDL is required when operating a vehicle designed to transport more than 15 passengers, including the driver. This ensures that individuals driving large capacity vehicles have the necessary skills and qualifications. Question 26. What requirement must be met by hazardous materials when they are transported on a bus? A. Be covered with a tarp. B. Be loaded on the rear seats. C. Be labeled. D. Be inspected every 100 miles. The correct answer is C. Be labeled. When hazardous materials are transported on a bus, they must be properly labeled to provide information about their nature and potential risks. This labeling ensures proper handling and response measures in case of emergencies. Question 27. If your bus breaks down on a freeway or expressway and you need to stop on the left side of the road, what is the recommended positioning for the bus? A. 
parallel to traffic with the rear door facing the downstream side of traffic. B. At an angle to traffic with the front door facing the downstream side of traffic. C. At an angle to traffic with the rear door facing the downstream side of traffic. D. Perpendicular to traffic with the front door facing the upstream side of traffic. The correct answer is B. At an angle to traffic with the front door facing the downstream side of traffic. If you have to stop a disabled bus on the left side of a freeway or expressway, it's best to position it at an angle to traffic with the front door facing the downstream side. This helps improve the visibility of the bus to other drivers and provides a safer environment for passengers to exit. Question 28. In an emergency evacuation situation, when guiding passengers to a secure location, they should be directed to a safe spot that is at least blank feet away from the bus. Uh, 50. B. 75. C. 100. D. 150. The correct answer is C. 100. When evacuating a bus during an emergency, passengers should be directed to a location that is at least 100 feet away from the bus to ensure their safety and reduce the risk of potential hazards. Question 29. When the right of way is uncertain, what is the safest action to take? A. Honk your horn to signal your presence. B. Proceed cautiously, assuming you have the right of way. C. Stop abruptly to avoid any confusion. D. Let the other vehicle have the right of way. The correct answer is D. Let the other vehicle have the right of way. In situations of uncertainty regarding the right of way, the safest approach is to yield and let the other vehicle proceed. This minimizes the risk of collisions and promotes safer interactions on the road. Question 30. Which type of cargo is allowed to be transported on buses? A. Radioactive materials. B. Small arms ammunition labeled ORM. D. C. Flammable liquids. D. Explosive fireworks. The correct answer is B. Small arms ammunition labeled ORM. D. Buses are permitted to carry small arms ammunition that is properly labeled as ORMD, indicating it's a material that presents a limited hazard. This ensures safe transportation without compromising the well-being of passengers and the driver. Question 31. What is expected of charter bus drivers? A. Explain the rules and not allow riders on the bus until departure time. B. Allow riders to board the bus as soon as they arrive. C. Offer free refreshments during the trip. D. Offer discounted tickets to local attractions. The correct answer is A. Explain the rules and not allow riders on the bus until departure time. Charter bus drivers should ensure passengers are aware of the rules and guidelines, and they should restrict boarding until the designated departure time for a smooth and organized journey. Question 32. When is the appropriate moment to deactivate your turn signal after completing a lane change or turn? A. Immediately upon activating the turn signal. B. When the lane change is complete. C. Once you notice another vehicle nearby. D. While making the lane change or turn. The correct answer is B. When the lane change is complete. You should cancel your turn signal after successfully completing a lane change or turn to prevent confusion among other drivers and to indicate that you have finished the maneuver. Question 33. What should be done with a passenger who becomes aggressive or unruly? A. Offer them a calm explanation of their behavior. B. Engage in a heated argument to calm them down. C. Leave them alone until they calm down naturally. D. Should not be let off the bus where it would be unsafe for him or her. The correct answer is D. Should not be let off the bus where it would be unsafe for him or her. If a passenger becomes violent or disruptive, it's important not to let them off the bus in a location where their safety would be compromised. The safety of the passenger and others on the road should always be a priority. Question 34. What is a recommended guideline for driving at night? 
A. Decrease your following distance to maintain visibility. B. Increase your normal daytime following distance by one second. C. Drive slightly faster to reduce time on the road. D. Use high beam headlights at all times. The correct answer is B. Increase your normal daytime following distance by one second. When driving at night, it's advised to extend your following distance by one second compared to your normal daytime following distance. This provides additional reaction time and helps account for reduced visibility and potential hazards. Question 35. If your bus tilts outward on a banked curve, what might be the cause? A. Driving too fast. B. Excessive braking. C. Driving too slow. D. Uneven tire pressure. The correct answer is A. Driving too fast. When your bus leans outward on a banked curve, it could indicate that you're driving too fast for the curve's banking angle. Slower speeds are necessary to maintain stability and prevent potential rollovers. Question 36. Upon reaching the bus stop, what details should you communicate to the passengers? A. A list of upcoming stops on the route. B. A brief history of the bus company. C. Location. Reason for stopping next departure time, and the bus number. D. Your personal preferences for the journey. The correct answer is C. Location, reason for stopping, next departure time, and the bus number. To keep passengers well informed, you should announce the current location, reason for the stop, the time of the next departure, and the identification number of the bus. This helps passengers make informed decisions and ensures a smooth boarding process. Question 37. Which of the following statements concerning speed is accurate? A. Speeding is safe if you are in a hurry. B. You should be able to stop the distance you can see ahead. C. Faster speeds enhance fuel efficiency. D. Higher speeds improve overall vehicle stability. The correct answer is B. You should be able to stop the distance you can see ahead. One fundamental aspect of safe driving is maintaining a speed at which you can stop within the distance you have clear visibility of. This ensures you have ample time to react to potential obstacles or hazards on the road. Question 38. Which CDL class does a straight vehicle with a gross vehicle weight rating, GVWR, of 20,000 pounds, transporting 20 passengers belong to? A. Class A. B. Class B. C. Class D. D. Class C. The correct answer is D. Class C. A vehicle with a GVWR of 20,000 pounds that carries 20 passengers falls into the Class C CDL category, which typically covers vehicles designed to transport more than 16 passengers or hazardous materials. Question 39. How often should the coolant level be inspected in a pressurized cooling system? A. By a mechanic, every 90 days. B. During every refueling stop. C. Whenever the vehicle is parked for more than an hour. D. Once a year during annual maintenance. The correct answer is A. By a mechanic, every 90 days. In a pressurized cooling system, a mechanic should check the coolant level every 90 days as part of routine maintenance. This helps ensure proper engine cooling and prevents overheating issues. Question 40. What is the most effective approach to move a loaded bus uphill from a complete stop on a steep grade, 4% or more, using a manual transmission? A. Engage the clutch rapidly and release the parking brake quickly. B. Engage the clutch partially and quickly press the accelerator. C. Slowly release the clutch while releasing the parking brake. D. Release the parking brake rapidly and immediately engage the clutch. The correct answer is C. Slowly release the clutch while releasing the parking brake. The optimal technique is to gradually release the clutch while simultaneously releasing the parking brake when starting a loaded bus on a steep uphill grade with a manual transmission. This method prevents excessive strain on the clutch and transmission and ensures a controlled start. 
Question 41. When submitting an application for a bus driving position, you are required to disclose any motor vehicle accidents you were part of during the previous blank years. A. 1. B. 2. C. 5. D. 3. The correct answer is D. 3. During the job application process for a bus driving role, you are generally obligated to report any motor vehicle accidents you were involved in within the last three years. This information helps the employer assess your driving history and qualifications. Question 42. If your bus is equipped with an emergency exit door, what requirement must it fulfill? A. Be secured when the bus is moving. B. Be painted in a bright color for visibility. C. Be locked at all times for security. D. Only be used during designated drills. The correct answer is A. Be secured when the bus is moving. An emergency exit door on a bus must be properly secured while the vehicle is in motion to ensure passenger safety and prevent any accidental openings that could endanger passengers or disrupt the journey. Question 43. When is it appropriate to adjust the driver's seat? A. While the bus is in motion for convenience. B. Prior to starting the engine. C. Only when the bus is at a complete stop. D. During routine maintenance checks. The correct answer is C. Only when the bus is at a complete stop. The driver's seat should only be adjusted when the bus is fully stationary to ensure the driver's safety and avoid any distractions or accidents that might arise from making adjustments while the vehicle is in motion. Question 44. For what purpose can the interlock system for the brake and accelerator on a transit coach be utilized? A. To improve fuel efficiency. B. To help downshift. C. To engage cruise control. D. To override the engine speed limit. The correct answer is B. To help downshift. The interlock system for the brake and accelerator on a transit coach can be employed to facilitate downshifting during descents, enhancing control, and aiding in managing speed. Question 45. When traveling at speeds exceeding 40 miles, what is the recommended safe minimum following distance for optimal daytime conditions? A. 4 seconds plus 1 second. B. 3 seconds. C. 2 seconds. D. 5 seconds. The correct answer is A. 4 seconds plus 1 second. In ideal daytime conditions, when driving faster than 40 mph, it's advised to maintain a following distance of 4 seconds plus 1 additional second for increased safety. This provides ample time to react and maneuver if the vehicle in front suddenly stops or encounters an obstacle. Question 46. Which component must be in proper working condition before the bus can depart among the following? A. Windshield wipers. B. Air conditioning system. C. Service brakes. D. Radio communication. The correct answer is C. Service brakes. Among the listed options, the service brakes are a critical safety feature that must be in good working order before the bus can leave. Functional brakes are essential for safe operation and stopping in various road conditions. Question 47. If your speed increases from 20 to 60 mapper, a tripling of the original speed, how much additional braking distance is needed at 60 mapper compared to 20 map? A. 1 times 3 or 3. B. 2 times 3 or 6. C. 4 times 3 or 12. D. 3 times 3 or 9. The correct answer is D. 3 times 3 or 9. When speed triples, braking distance increases by a factor of 9. This is an important consideration for drivers to maintain safe following distances and ensure proper stopping distances at higher speeds. Question 48. What are some elements to examine within the interior of a bus when conducting the pre-trip inspection? A. Passenger seats and windows. B. Fuel tank and exhaust system. C. Parking brake and steering mechanism. D. Windshield wipers and exterior lights. The correct answer is C. 
parking brake and steering mechanism. As part of the pre-trip inspection process, evaluating the parking brake and steering mechanism is crucial. Ensuring the proper functionality of these components guarantees the bus's ability to be securely parked and maneuvered, contributing to both passenger safety and overall road safety. Question 49. Is the following statement true or false? While examining the exterior of the bus, you should secure any open emergency exits or access panels. A. True. B. False. C. Partially true. D. Mostly true. The correct answer is A. True. During the inspection of the bus's exterior, it's important to close any open emergency exits or access panels to ensure they are secure and won't pose a safety risk during the journey. Question 50. Is the following statement true or false? While the majority of hazardous materials are prohibited from being transported on a bus, there are certain hazardous materials that are permitted? A. True. B. False. C. Not applicable. D. Partly true. The correct answer is A. True. Although most hazardous materials are restricted from bus transportation, there are specific hazardous materials that are allowed under specific regulations. These materials are subject to stringent safety guidelines and proper packaging to ensure the safety of passengers and the environment. Question 51. Which of the following items can be transported as hazardous materials? A. Electronics and clothing. B. Small arms ammunition, hospital supplies and hospital drugs. C. Fresh produce and cleaning supplies. D. Books and office supplies. The correct answer is B. Small arms ammunition, hospital supplies, and hospital drugs. Some hazardous materials that may be transported include items such as small arms ammunition, hospital supplies, and hospital drugs. However, they must be handled and packaged according to strict safety regulations to ensure secure transport. Question 52. Is the following statement true or false? In buses designed to accommodate standing passengers, you have the freedom to stand anywhere you prefer? A. True. B. False. C. Not applicable. D. Partially true. The correct answer is B. False. The statement is false. While buses designed for standing passengers do allow standing, Passengers are typically required to stand in designated areas to ensure safety, maintain order, and facilitate efficient boarding and alighting. Question 53. Is the location where you have a disruptive passenger disembark from the bus significant? A. Yes. B. No. C. Not applicable. D. Partially true. The correct answer is a. Yes. The location where a disruptive passenger is asked to leave the bus matters. It should be a safe and appropriate spot that ensures the safety of the passenger and other riders, and it should follow company policies and legal guidelines. Question 54. Which of the following actions constitutes a prohibited practice when operating a bus? A. Performing regular maintenance checks. B using the horn in emergency situations. C. Cleaning the interior at designated stops. D. Fueling with riders on board. The correct answer is D. Fueling with riders on board. Engaging in the prohibited practice of fueling a bus while passengers are on board poses potential safety risks. It's essential to avoid this practice to ensure the safety and well-being of both passengers and the operator. Question 55. Is the following statement true or false? Urban mass transit coaches are equipped with a brake and accelerator interlock system, and the parking brake can only be engaged when the rear door of a transit bus is open? A. True. B. False. C. Not applicable. D. Partially true. The correct answer is... B. False. The statement is false. 
urban mass transit coaches may feature a brake and accelerator interlock system, but the parking brake can typically be engaged independently of the state of the rear door. There is no requirement for the rear door to be open for the parking brake to function. Question 56. Is the following statement true or false? If you are employed as an interstate carrier, you are required to fill out a written inspection report for every bus driver. A. True. B. False. C. Not applicable. D. Partially true. The correct answer is A. True. The statement is true. As an interstate carrier, you are obligated to complete a written inspection report for each bus driver as part of compliance with regulations and to ensure the safety of both drivers and passengers. Question 57. Who holds the responsibility for inspecting emergency equipment prior to driving? A. Passengers. B. Maintenance personnel. C. The driver. D. The dispatcher. The correct answer is C. The driver. It is the duty of the driver to inspect the emergency equipment before operating the buse. This practice ensures that all essential safety equipment is in proper working order in case of any emergency situations during the journey. Question 58. What shape do hazardous material labels typically have? A. Circular. B. Diamond-shaped. C. Triangle-shaped. D. Rectangular. The correct answer is B. Diamond-shaped. Hazardous material labels are commonly diamond-shaped and feature specific symbols, colors, and codes that provide important information about the nature of the hazardous material being transported. Question 59. Among the following weather conditions, which one can lead to the most hazardous driving? A. Light rain. B. Fog. C. Ice. D. Overcast skies. The correct answer is C. Ice. Among various poor weather conditions, driving on icy surfaces can be exceptionally dangerous due to the reduced traction and increased risk of skidding or losing control of the vehicle. Question 60. In what situation do you need to be aware of if you have to make a sudden swerve to avoid a collision? A. Where other vehicles are around your bus. B. In an empty parking lot. C. When your bus is stationary. D. Only when pedestrians are present. The correct answer is A. Where other vehicles are around your bus. When you need to swerve suddenly to avoid an accident, it's crucial to be mindful of the presence of other vehicles in the vicinity of your bus. This awareness helps prevent causing further collisions or endangering other road users. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you still need more practice, then check out these videos or click the first link in the description to get your cheat sheet, which will help you pass your CDL exam on your first try.